Perry Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. There's a lot of excitement in Melrose Springs, for it's almost election time. The talk of the town is, who will be the next mayor? So far, there are two candidates for the office. Honest Harold's boss, Stanley Peabody, manager of the local radio station, and Honest Harold himself, who has been drafted by his listeners. It's morning now, and we find the people's choice at home shaving. Gosh, just can't believe it. I'm really running for mayor. Kind of scared, though. Never made a political speech in my life. Let's see. When they call on me, I'll say, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, where'd I put that shaving brush? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I really know you too well to call you that. Oop, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Better start over here. <clears throat> Fellow citizens, first I'd like to explain to you why I'm running for office. There's a group in power now that has pocketed too much of your money. Now I want a chance. Oh. <laughs> I better rehearse this. <laughs> now let's see. If I'm elected, I promise to work to the best of my ability. And as for my opponents, oh, uh, ooh, <laughs> suck the shaving brush in my mouth. Harold? Uh, yes, Mother? Breakfast is almost ready. How do you want your egg? <laughs> Speaking of my opponent, Stanley Peabody. He's inefficient, incompetent, and his brains are... Scrambled? His brains are scrambled. Uh, Say <laughs> I think I'll keep that in. <laughs> Good morning, Station KHJP. Mr. Peabody, I'll ring his office. There you are. Ah, oh, good morning, Glory. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. What? Oh, well, I'm not mayor yet, Gloria. Well, you will be. I think you're just the kind of mayor we need. You're honest, a plain man of the people. Why, you're another Abraham Lincoln. No. He was taller. <laughs> Besides, you have awful cute dimples. Yeah, Gloria, campaigning for mayor is a very serious thing. The only reason I'm running is that so many of my listeners wrote in and asked me to. The people of Melrose Springs want an honest city government. And if I'm elected, that's what I intend to give them. Hooray! Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, Harold, last night I thought of some wonderful slogans for your campaign. You did? Yes, listen to this one. Honest Harold is awfully nice. If I can get away with it, I'll vote for him twice. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria, that's not honest. And he'll pass out cigars, kiss babies with them. I'd like to be the baby kissed by him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here's another one. Huh? Stanley Peabody is great. He thinks, but confidentially, I think he's... Gloria. <laughs> oh, and, Harold, you know what else I'm doing? What? Well, whenever I answer the phone, if Mr. Peabody isn't around, I always say, don't vote for Stanley Peabody. He's a drip. A drip? Oh, yeah, yeah. you do, huh? Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Somebody's calling now. Just uh, listen to this. Uh. Hello, Station KHJP. Don't vote for Stanley Peabody. He's a... Who's this? Mr. Peabody. <laughs> you, you must have the wrong number. Goodbye. Gee, I guess I'm an ex-PBX. <laughs> Gloria? Yes, sir? If you don't stop that campaigning on the phone, I'm going to make a switch at the switchboard. Oh, brother. <laughs> and hemp? Uh, yes, boss? I want a few words with you in my office. Kindly walk this way. Nobody could walk that way. <laughs> Shut the door. Yes, sir. Not from the outside. Come in here. <laughs> Kemp, are you still persisting in this idiotic idea of running against me for mayor? Well, it, yes. How ridiculous. <laughs> Why, you have absolutely no experience While I come from a political family uh? Why, before he came to America My grandfather had a seat in the British Parliament He did? And after he moved over here He still kept his seat in England <laughs> Must have been an awful strain on his suspenders 
<laughs> Very funny. Ha, ha. Well, I liked it. Hemp, have you any idea what it takes to become mayor? Certainly. The most votes. Precisely. <laughs> and in order to get those votes, you have to have an organization. Do you know what's behind me? Sure, the water cooler. <laughs> no, a political machine. And I have news for you. My uncle is supporting me. Yeah, he's been doing it for years. <laughs> my uncle has a lot of influence in this town, and I have a lot of others working for me. Do you have a machine? Well, just my 36 Essex. <laughs> oh, you mean a machine. <laughs> I'll bet you don't even have a campaign manager. Well, I don't need a campaign manager. The people know that I'm honest, and that's all that's necessary. Why don't you give up, Hemp? You haven't a chance. What? Do you think the people of this town are going to vote for an idiot, a fool, a moron? I don't know, Stanley. We'll see how many votes you can get. <laughs> Talk about a campaign manager. You're just trying to scare me out of running, that's all. I don't need any. What's that on the telephone pole? A poster with Peabody's picture. There's one on the next telephone pole, and the next one. Hmm. What's that poster say? Vote for Stanley Peabody. Don't derail the train of progress with a jerk. Say, that's pretty clever. Ooh, he means me. <laughs> I guess I do need a campaign manager. Now, well, maybe old Doc Yak Yak, the veterinarian, can suggest somebody. I'll go see him right away, as soon as I draw a mustache on Peabody's picture. <laughs> so, you uh, think you need a campaign manager, eh, Harold? Oh, I sure do, Doc. Can you suggest anybody? Well, I think I know just the fella for the job. He's intelligent, hardworking, and he's the shrewdest man I know. I'm afraid to ask you this, Doc, but who? Me. <laughs> <laughs> No, fool. Doc, I appreciate your offer, but I think I'd better try to get somebody else. All right, Harold. If you'll excuse me now, I've got some work to do. Oh, now I've hurt his feelings. I was just offering my services as an old friend, but if I'm not good enough... Doc, I didn't... That's need... all right. I'm just a nobody, just an old horse doctor. Doc, old horse, uh, old... <laughs> The animals love me. Huh? Why, there's not a cocker spaniel in town that wouldn't share his last can of Red Heart with me. <laughs> Doc, i do anything for you. You know that. You can be my campaign manager. Well, okay, Harold, if you insist. <clears throat> well, candidate Hemp, let's get down to business. Uh, got your campaign speech? Well, sort of. Well, the first thing you got to do is try it out. On you? No, on my animals. What? Best way to tell if your speech sounds sincere. The animals can spot a phony a mile away. But, Doc... Come on. I'll take you into your audience. Oh, <laughs> What an audience. Quiet. Quiet, voters. Voters. <laughs> All right, fellow citizens. I want to introduce our next mayor, Honest Harold Hemp. <laughs> No Eloise, no heckling. All right, Harold, start your speech. And don't forget, be sincere. Sincere? This is ridiculous. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, what's the matter with that baby goat? Well, she's hurt. You just said ladies and gentlemen, but you left out the kids. <laughs> oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and young goats. Never have I seen such intelligent faces. Harold, <laughs> you're not being sincere. Uh, and with your support, fellow voters, I'll defeat my opponent, Stanley Peabody, while it'll be like leading a lamb to the slaughter. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas. Oh. Fellas! Uh. Oh, there's the phone. I'll be right back. Okay, Doc. I didn't mean to insult you, little animals. Well, I love animals. Honest. You can ask my cat. Harold. Huh? Harold. I got some bad news. What is it? That was Gloria at the station. What? Stanley Peabody has hired a big sound truck. He's going to campaign around town in it this afternoon. Oh, that's going to cost me a lot of votes. Oh, not while I'm your manager. 
Harold, I got an idea. What's that? Yes, sir. My brain's ticking away every second. Stop taking bows, Doc. Tell me your idea. <laughs> All right, Harold. I'm going to build you a float on my buggy out in the barn. A float? Mm-hmm. I'll paint some signs on it and hitch it to my horse, Silver Moon. Then we'll follow Peabody Sound Truck all over town. <laughs> That'll steal his thunder. Say, I think you got something there, Doc. Sure. Now, uh, we've only got an hour. You better go to the marshal's office and get a parade permit. Yeah, all right, Doc. And you'd better hurry, Mayor Hemp. Mayor? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> and thank you, voters. <laughs> Uh, better hurry. Parade starts in an hour. That Pete the Marshal is so slow, it'll probably take him that long just to make out the permit. Oh, my goodness. Pete's old father, Cleet, is here today. He's slower than Pete. Cleet, I want you to do something for me right away. Now, just a minute, Harold. We've got a new system here. What? Take a number there, and I'll call you when it's your turn. Oh, <laughs> all right. Now, take a seat over there. That's it. Now, what's your number? Sixty-five. Number sixty-five! <laughs> what a system. Now, look here, Cleet. I'm in a hurry. I want a permit for a float this afternoon. Uh, now, now just, just a minute, Harold. I have to fill out a form. Oh, my goodness. Name, please. Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> Margaret O'Brien, uh, let me write that down. When did you cut off your curls, Margaret? <laughs> Very funny. How old are you, Harold? Well, I'm nearing 40. Nearing ah. 40? Huh. <laughs> you must be on your second time around. <laughs> Come on, please. I've got to have that permit. <laughs> All right. What year do you want it for? This year, this afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, huh? Let me write that down. Oh. <laughs> Get a move on, Cleet. Uh, where are you going to use the permit? Right here in Melrose Springs. Melrose Springs. Let me write that down. <laughs> Hold it, Newt. There's no lake around here. Now, what do I need a lake for? For the boat. Boat? Oh, my goodness. It's not a boat. It's a float. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to float a boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to start all over again. Take another number, Harold, and I'll call you. Pete, there's something I'd like to call you. I bet I know what it is. <laughs> but I ain't gonna write that down. <laughs> Get that guy down. had to play bingo with Cleet, but I finally got the permit. Oh, good, good. Well, the float's all finished. <laughs> Ain't she a beaut? Yes, Doc, and we better hurry. But there's my master touch. That picture on the side there. Where? There, there. Miss Rheingold of 1950. <laughs> she isn't running for mayor. No, but she looks better in a bathing suit than you do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Doc. Peabody's sound truck goes out any minute. And doesn't my horse, Silver Moon, look cute with that bow on her? <laughs> Oh, brother. <laughs> Doc, there goes Peabody's sound truck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get aboard. Hurry up. Oh, this will fix Peabody all right. Shrewdest thing you ever did, Harold, making me your campaign man. Yeah, all right. Come on. All right, hold on, Harold. Here, here we go. Hey, uh, giddy up, Silver Moon. Come on, girl. <laughs> oh. Now what's the matter, Doc? I guess I built the float too wide. Won't go through the barn door. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, come to your life, Harold. The folks are after you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 why, Harold, you got your head stuck right through that picture of Miss Rheingold. Uh. <laughs> Say, you do look pretty good in that bathing suit. <laughs> Doc, you're fired. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're fired, too.
We'll return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Are you interested in going into the perfume business? Then you won't want to miss Bing Crosby tonight when he tries his sales pitch on his guest, Claudette Colbert. Yes, be sure to join Bing Crosby and Claudette Colbert later tonight over most of these same stations. And by the way, listen for Harold Perry's important announcement at the end of our show. And now back to Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold's campaign for mayor isn't going too well. He fell out with Doc Yancey, his campaign manager, when he fell out of the float. It's the following morning now. Our unhappy candidate is just eating breakfast when... Harold? Uh, what is it, Mother? Oh, look what's in the morning paper. Well, let me see. Stanley Peabody, candidate for mayor, will speak at the high school tonight. His subject will be, what is good city government? Show off. Or oh, read the rest of it, Harold. Huh? Mr. Peabody challenges his opponent, Harold Hemp, to meet him there and speak on the same subject. If he dares. Whoop. Hmm, I suppose he thinks you're afraid to get up there and speak. Yeah, and he wouldn't dare say that if it wasn't true. Oh. <laughs> now, Harold, you're a fine public speaker. Why, remember the time in the eighth grade when you delivered that recitation, a message to Garcia? Yes, Mother. The time I delivered the message, Garcia was gone. <laughs> <laughs> mother, I can't do it. Oh, now, you mustn't be afraid, son. Now, why don't you sit down right now and write that speech? Mother, I don't know anything about city government. I thought I'd find out about that after I got elected. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You could go to the public library. They must have books on city government. Say, I bet they do. Oh. I'm down the library right now. That's the spirit, my boy. Goodbye, Mother. Oh, oh Harold, uh, Harold, as long as you're going to the library, you might as well return that book you've been reading. Oh, good idea. And here it is, too. The Bobsy Twins in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder where they'll go next. <laughs> Like a morgue in this library. This is where they probably buried Carnegie. <laughs> and there's dear Miss Witherspoon behind the desk. Hey, good morning, Miss Witherspoon. I'd like... Shh. No loud talking in the library. Oh, 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 excuse me. I'll be with you in a minute. All right. Uh, <coughs> Quiet! <laughs> now, what is it? I want to get a... I want to get a book. The children's section is right over there. <laughs> you see, I'm going to run for mayor, and I want to read a book on city government. We just had one book on that subject, city government, by Timothy Hargrove. It's on that shelf right over there. Uh, thank you. Shh, on your toes. Oh, so you think I am a ballet dancer? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Yeah, here's the shelf. Let's see here. What's that? <laughs> Somebody's got a slow leak. <laughs> oh, oh, it's Miss Witherspoon. Come here. All right. Tippy toe. Tippy toe. <laughs> Wait till I get elected mayor. I'll demote her to the nonfiction section. <laughs> Yes, Miss Witherspoon? I just remembered. I checked out that book on city government this morning. You did? Who got it? Maybe I can borrow it from him. Stanley Peabody. Stanley Peabody? Quiet! Oh, quiet yourself. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> here in the park all day. What am I going to do? Can't show up tonight with no speech. I don't know why I wanted to run for mayor anyway. Uh, pardon me, sir. What? Have I the honor of addressing, perchance, honest Harold Hemp? Why, yes. The candidate for mayor of this fair city? Yeah, that's right. Well, it is a lucky, lucky day. <laughs> I happened to be in this vicinity a few days, saw your photograph in the paper, and remarked to myself, I'd like to help that man get elected. 
in the interests of good government. Well, thank you. Uh, are you in the political game, Mr. Uh... A very astute question. I have been a political advisor for years. Uh, my card. Oh, thanks. Careful, the ink isn't dry. <laughs> <laughs> J.P. Camroy, political consultant. Headquarters over Jimmy's pool room. <laughs> oh, but just uh, temporary quarters. Oh, of course. Now, if there's any advice I could give your campaign manager... Well, uh, uh, I don't have one right now. You don't have a campaign manager. Tis a lucky, lucky day. It is? J.P. Camroy hereby tenders you his services as campaign manager in the interests of good government. Uh, but, Mr. Camroy... Now, my first official duty is to peruse your speech for tonight. Uh, we've got to look out for dangling participants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you see, I haven't prepared my speech yet. You haven't prepared your speech? Yeah. Oh, tis a lucky, lucky day. By a quirk of fate, I just happen to have a speech with me that is suitable for the occasion. Oh? And I am going to let you have it. In the interests of good government. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> the only cost to you will be a slight typing fee. Yeah, oh, well, I don't have much money on me, just $9.60. That is the typing fee. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a coincidence. <laughs> May I see the speech first? Certainly. Here it is. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created... E Say, this is pretty good. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, that they are endowed with certain unalienable rights. And among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of hap... Wait a minute. This is the Declaration of Independence. You guessed it. And what a speech. Yeah, but this hasn't got anything to do with city government. Exactly. You let your opponent put the audience to sleep with the dry stuff, taxes, the budget. Then you give them the Declaration of Independence. You're in. I am? And look who wrote your speech. Yeah? Thomas Jefferson. Ben Franklin. Yeah. Where can you get writers like that for $9? <laughs> Well, I guess you got a point there, all right. Why? A thing like this could sweep you into office. You know, J.P., I believe you're right. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget the typing fee. It, oh, yes, excuse me. Uh, here you are, $9.60. Thank you. Tis a lucky, lucky day. It sure is. <laughs> Uh, sure was a lucky, lucky day when I ran into old J.P. Pretty clever of him thinking of that Declaration of Independence. I got it cheap, too, only $9.60. Well, I guess I'm a real politician now. Sweater vest, got a pocket full of cigars and everything. Hey, Harold. Oh, hello, Doc. Have a cigar. Well, thanks. I don't smoke myself, but my goat likes them. <laughs> They're kind to of his T-zone. <laughs> Good. Harold, when I heard about you getting trapped into that speech tonight, I thought I'd let bygones be bygones. I may not be your campaign manager anymore, but Doc Yancey isn't one to desert a friend in need. Well, thank you a lot, Doc, but I, I don't really need any help. Huh? Aren't you worried about making that speech? Worried? Nah. What kind of a speech is it? Well, it's a sort of a um, declaration of independence. Who wrote it? Oh, a couple of ghost writers. <laughs> <laughs> See you tonight, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about Harold. Honest boy, though. <laughs> Good afternoon, Harold. Oh, Gloria, have a cigar. I mean, how are you? Oh, fine. Gee, I thought you'd be home writing your speech. It's all written, Gloria. Did you write it all by yourself? Well, a couple of fellows helped me, B. Franklin and T. Jefferson. Local boys? Lo well, <laughs> no, they're from out of town, Philadelphia. <laughs> Hemp, what are you doing out here? Well, Peabody, old body, have a cigar. No, thank you. Huh? Can't stand a rope from hemp, eh? <laughs> so you're going to show up tonight, hemp. Well, I'm warning you, you don't know what this is going to cost you. Sure I do. Nine dollars and sixty cents. What? Skip, skip it, Stanley. Yes, sir, you're in for a big surprise. There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight, and you're going to be the one that's burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Stanley sitting on the other side of that stage with his long legs crossed. He's wearing tartan garters. The dude. Oh, there's Mother down in the audience. Hello, Mother. I bet she'd be proud of me tonight. The meeting will please come to order. Uh, Mr. Honeycutt, hope he cuts it short. Thank you. As chairman of the Melrose Spring Civic League, I want to welcome you all to the school auditorium. Tonight, we're going to hear our two candidates for mayor speak on the subject of good city government. That's what he thinks. <laughs> Incidentally, <laughs> that reminds me of a little witticism. <laughs> oh, brother, he's going to tell one of his Rotary Club jokes. <laughs> uh, here it is. <clears throat> Why should some of our politicians go back to school? So they get to know some principles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother, Thomas Jefferson didn't write that. Our first speaker will be Mr. Stanley Peabody. Oh, he must have all his relatives here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Come on, Stanley, let's get that tired old speech over with. Ladies and gentlemen, I prepared a speech on city government for tonight. We know that. But at the last moment, I decided that no words of mine could be as eloquent as the great American document I'm going to read to you. What's this? We hold these truths to be self-evident <laughs> that all men are created equal. Oop, that's my speech. That they are endowed with certain unalienable rights. I've been framed. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm sunk. Wonder if I could sneak out of here. That to secure these rights... What's that? Look at all those doors. Who did they come from? That to secure these rights... That oh, oh, to secure oh, oh, oh. these rights. <laughs> Don't say that. Oh, 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 oh. Down, down. Oh, oh. Let go of my dog. Go away. Wonderful dog saved my life. Thank you, little doggies. Little, little, get down, get down. Wonder who let him out of the pond. Hi, you here. Oh, it's Doc Yancey, I'll bet he... Good old Doc. All right, now, quiet, fellas, quiet. Well, we might as well adjourn. It looks like the meeting has gone to the dogs. <laughs> Doc. Yes, what is it, Harold? Thanks, old friend. That was a pretty clever idea, letting the dogs out of the pond to save me. Wasn't thinking of you, Harold. Just thought it was time those dogs got out for a little constitutional. Yeah, oh, sure. <laughs> Look here, Hemp. Oh, hello, Stanley. That was an underhanded trick, stopping my speech that way. And I paid J.P. Camroy $25 for that idea. You did? I only paid him nine sixty. dollars <laughs> <laughs> It's a lucky, lucky day. <laughs> You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold, who returns in just a moment with an important announcement. The supporting players tonight included Catherine Card, Ken Peters, Leo Cleary, Ruth Parrott, and John McIntyre, and featured Gloria Holliday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Bill Danch. Now back to Harold Perry. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, Bob, for the people who missed it, I'm hunting for a laughing lady, someone we can invite to appear on our show. Her laugh will enter her in the Honest Harold Laugh Contest, and it begins right in her hometown. So, ladies, if the laugh contest is being conducted in your city, please enter, and you may be here with us some Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned now for the Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. Oh, that's a good show. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs> 